Hello Silicon Pioneers, welcome to another exploration of the semiconductor cosmos. Thank you for tuning in once more. I'm your host, Semi Sherpa, your enthusiastic guide through the vast expanse of transistors, conductors, and capacitors, where electrons perform their lively dance and power our world. Charge up, for Ohm is where the heart is. Today, we conclude our comprehensive series on EUV photolithography by shining a light on the crucial role played by EUV photoresist materials. In the first section, we'll start with a look at conventional chemically amplified resists, CAR, initially designed for deep UV lithography like KRF and ARF, and explore how they evolved to become the forerunners for EUV lithography. We'll delve into the differences in photoacid production between EUV and deep UV, illuminating the unique challenges and solutions. Our second segment will demystify the stochastic effects in CAR, drawing a parallel between the predictable world of classical physics in deep UV and the unpredictable quantum mechanics in EUV. Next, we introduce the innovative Impria metal oxide resist, MOR, which leverages tin atoms for enhanced EUV absorption, marking a significant advancement in high-volume manufacturing. In our final segment, we explore cutting-edge strategies to navigate the resolution, line-width roughness, and sensitivity trade-off, selecting three promising approaches for their relevance and potential impact. Before we dive deep into this episode, I highly recommend revisiting our previous discussions for a fuller understanding. Specifically, our first episode on track equipment, covering both coding and development processes, and our seventh episode on lithography chemicals for optical UV lithography, will greatly augment your appreciation of today's topic. As always, we've consciously avoided complex equations to ensure a lucid and thorough grasp of the EUV photoresist critical and high-volume manufacturing. Despite my profound enthusiasm for chemistry, I understand that not all silicon pioneers share this familiarity with intricate chemical formulations. Hence, I've endeavored to distill these concepts, making our conversation not just informative but also welcoming to everyone. Strap in for an enlightening voyage to the essence of the EUV lithography universe. Are you ready to jump? May the silicon be with you. Light speed. Please note that my content is exclusively for YouTube, and any uploads found elsewhere are unauthorized. Each video is meticulously crafted, akin to the precision of silicon wafer fabrication, involving a month-long process with late nights and ample coffee. Discovering my content on platforms other than YouTube is disheartening and impacts my motivation. Supporting the idea of open knowledge sharing should not be mistaken for allowing the redistribution of my content elsewhere. Your understanding and upholding creators' rights is appreciated. In the realm of deep UV lithography like KRF and ARF, conventional car type resists operate through a distinct process. Initially, the direct interaction between the incoming exposure radiation and the photoacid generator, known as POG in the photoresist, leads to the formation of a strong photoacid. This photo-generated acid and acid diffusion is instrumental in catalyzing chemical reactions that transform the polymer's solubility from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. This transformation is achieved by the removal of a protecting group from the polymer. The catalytic nature of this reaction is noteworthy. A single acid molecule can catalyze numerous solubility-changing reactions within the resist polymer. This attribute contributes to a potentially very high photospeed in the resist. To optimize photospeed in a resist, the photoresist composition is carefully adjusted. The goal is to reduce photon absorption by the polymer resin and enhance absorption by the POG. In this context, it's important to note that the quantum yields for acid production are capped at 100%. This implies that each photon absorbed by the POG can only trigger a single acid production event. This limitation aligns with the Stark-Einstein law which dictates that each absorbed photon causes a photochemical change within the same molecule. Contrastingly, the scenario in EUV lithography presents a markedly different picture. While the mechanism of solubility change through chemically amplified acid catalyzed deprotection remains somewhat similar, the process of photoacid generation diverges significantly. EUV photons, possessing substantially higher energy than KRF or ARF photons, exhibit a unique absorption mechanism. 
Rather than being absorbed by functional groups like pod chromophores, EUV photons are absorbed directly by atoms. In EUV lithography, the interaction between photons and resist components is more pronounced due to the higher energy of EUV photons, approximately 92 electron volts, which exceeds the ionization potential of resist materials. When a polymer molecule absorbs an EUV photon, it undergoes ionization, emitting photoelectrons and leaving a radical cation hole in the polymer resin. The initially liberated electrons, with an energy range of about 75 to 82 electron volts, possess enough energy to cause further ionization in the resist, leading to the generation of more electrons. These electrons traverse through the resist, losing energy and interacting with other atoms and functional groups. This journey sometimes results in the generation of secondary electrons. Experimental research on car resists for EUV lithography has shown that a single absorbed EUV photon can produce up to six photoacids. This finding indicates that the absorption of one EUV photon can lead to the generation of multiple electrons, each contributing to the production of photoacids. Through modeling, the total electron yield, or TEY, has been estimated to be in the range of 2 to 4 electrons per photon. It is these electrons and their resultant holes that are responsible for producing photoacids through chemical transformations. Typically, photoacids are generated at a distance of 3 to 7 nanometers from the initial ionization site. In summary, the entire resist film in EUV lithography is utilized as an absorber for photoacid generation. This is in contrast to EPV lithography, where direct acid generation due to the absorption of EUV photons by Pog molecules is rare, primarily because of the low concentration of Pog as an additive. Researchers have been exploring the primary chemical mechanisms in EUV chemically amplified resist to elucidate the diverse methods of photoacid generation from a single EUV photon. Understanding the interaction of electrons and holes with molecules in resist films is key to optimizing the performance of EUV photoresists. Firstly, let's discuss the hole-initiated chemistry mechanism. This concept was proposed by Kozawa and Tagawa from Osaka University in 2010. It provides an explanation for the interactions between electrons in both the polymer and photoacid generator, or simply POG. The process begins when an EUV photon is absorbed by the polymer matrix. This absorption results in the liberation of a photoelectron and leaves behind a charged radical on the polymer side group. Following this, the radical cation polymer undergoes a disproportionation reaction with a nearby unexposed polymer unit. This reaction creates a neutral radical and a cationic polymer group. The next step involves the primary electron, or possibly a secondary electron, interacting with a POG. This interaction, known as electron trapping or dissociative electron attachment, releases the acid anion. Finally, the acid anion reacts with the radical polymer group created in the second step, leading to the release of the acid. It's important to note that the generation of an acid from a POG molecule requires only a few electron volts. Therefore, the energy loss from the typical 80 electron volts of EUV generated electrons is sufficient to account for the production of multiple acids until they decay at energies of a few electron volts. Another mechanism is electron trapping with a dissociative mechanism. This involves the direct interaction of low energy electrons, possibly ranging from 0 to 5 electron volts, with a POG. The electron gets trapped by the POG molecule, occupying an antibonding orbital and altering the electronic structure of the POG. This alteration leads to the disintegration of the POG molecule and the formation of an acid molecule. Additionally, there's the internal excitation or dissociative electron excitation mechanism. This mechanism describes how high-energy electrons within the range of 10 to 80 electron volts interact with POG. These electrons donate a small amount of energy, about 2 to 3 electron volts, to elevate a bound electron to an excited state within the POG molecules. This mechanism suggests the possibility of generating multiple acids without consuming an electron. However, the observed quantum yields per 80 electron volt electron are less than 1%, indicating that this is not a highly efficient method for acid production. This implies that a POG molecule efficiently produces acids by absorbing a precise amount of energy, which is essential for transitioning electrons from bonding to antibonding states. Absorbing energy beyond this critical threshold may divert the process to unintended reactions or cause molecular breakdown. 
Considering that one EUV photon can produce up to four electrons and six acids, it's hypothesized that either electrons can generate multiple acids, or holes can independently generate acids. Further research is essential to determine whether electron trapping and hole initiated chemistry function independently or in a codependent manner. The initial generation of EUV resists marked a significant advancement in lithography, primarily utilizing the commercially established car or escape platforms, which were adaptations of the existing KRF and ARF resist chemistries. EUV photons are known for their substantially higher energy compared to KRF or ARF photons. This results in their absorption occurring directly at the atomic level, rather than by functional groups such as POG chromophores. This unique absorption characteristic is a key factor in the choice of EUV resist, leading to a preference for KRF car over ARF car. The reason for this preference lies in the aromatic compounds present in KRF car, which offer enhanced etch resistance, an important advantage that is achieved without compromising the absorption efficiency for EUV photons. Specifically, escape type resists have become a preferred choice in EUV lithography. Developed by IBM for KRF lithography, ESCAPE stands for Environmentally Stable Chemically Amplified Photoresists. This technology involves the random copolymerization of 4-hydroxystyrene with tert-butyl acrylate. A key distinction of ESCAPE copolymers is their thermal stability. Unlike the partially protected FOSP polymer, ESCAPE copolymers maintain their integrity without undergoing thermal deprotection even at temperatures as high as 180 degrees Celsius. This stability allows for annealing the resist near its glass transition temperature, effectively minimizing free volume or voids within the resist matrix. Such a reduction is crucial as it impedes the escape of photoacids from the matrix and the infiltration of airborne bases into the resist. Consequently, escape exhibits remarkable resistance to airborne contamination, a notable improvement over early cars. This is what the term environmentally stable in escape signifies. Furthermore, the process of photoacid catalyzed conversion of the tert-butyl ester to carboxylic acid plays a pivotal role in these resists. This conversion significantly accelerates the dissolution rate in the exposed area compared to the unexposed area. As a result, there is an effective increase in developer selectivity. Furthermore, the utilization of a high concentration of photodecomposable quenchers, PDQs, markedly enhances the dissolution rate contrast during the development process. The integration of PDQs into the resist system significantly boosts the dissolution rate differential between areas that have been exposed to EUV light and those that have not. This happens as the PDQs break apart under EUV light, which increases the difference in how easily the light exposed and non-exposed areas can be dissolved. This controls the spread of the acid in the exposed area, leading to enhanced resolution of the resist pattern. In the context of cars, it is important to note that most of the EUV photons are absorbed by the polymer. For these resists to achieve reasonable sensitivity, the energy absorbed by the polymer must be efficiently transferred to the POG, thereby creating acid. To address this, new POGs that can absorb EUV more effectively compared to traditional POGs have been introduced. Among these, new fluorinated POGs have shown enhanced sensitivity in epoxy-based hybrid materials. This enhancement is attributed to the strong absorption properties of fluorine. In summary, escape EUV resists have demonstrated a strong potential to resolve very small feature sizes. They have shown the capability for 30 nanometers half pitch resolution with the required sensitivity. However, it became evident that for further performance improvement, new resist materials, optimized specifically for the 13.5 nanometers wavelength exposure, were necessary. In deep UV lithography like KRF and ARF, anti-reflection coatings, ARC, such as bark or tark are utilized to minimize reflections at the interface both beneath and above the photoresist layer. Specifically, in ARF immersion lithography, a typical setup involves using an organic bark of about 200 to 400 angstroms thickness, paired with a resist layer measuring 800 to 1300 angstroms. In contrast, ARCs are generally not required for EUV lithography due to the minimal reflection from the layers underneath the resists, attributed to the strong absorption properties of EUV light. However, it has been recognized that an underlayer, UL, is essential for EUV chemically amplified resists for several reasons. 
Firstly, the underlayer helps to reduce the likelihood of pattern collapse. Additionally, a low surface tension rinse, such as firm, is applied to further mitigate pattern collapse during resist development. Secondly, the level of stochastic induced defects is also dependent on the underlayer. While HMDS priming can reduce the develop rate of resist near the substrate, an underlayer that strongly interacts with the photoresist, such as through hydrogen bonding, is effective in reducing stochastic defects. Lastly, the underlayer acts as an impermeable chemical barrier, preventing contamination from the substrate films below. This is particularly important in preventing issues like amine poisoning from sublayers like hard masks, which can lead to footing profiles after development. Additionally, preventing the loss of photoacid from the photoresist to the sublayer is crucial, because this can exacerbate stochastic effects, leading to the degradation of line edge roughness and the formation of stochastic defects. For these purposes, spin on carbon, typically around 40 to 50 angstroms thick, is used as an underlayer for EUV car which usually has a thickness of 300 to 600 angstroms. The constituents of the underlayer are similar to those in ARCs, including polymer resin, cross-linker, thermal acid generator, solvent, and some additives. While barks for deep UV are available for both positive tone development, PTD, and negative tone development, NTD, underlayers for UV are exclusively designed for either PTD or NTD. There have been numerous suggestions to enhance the functionality of underlayers, such as incorporating photoacid generators for increased acid generation or EUV sensitizers for more secondary electron generation. However, evaluations have shown that the most crucial function of the underlayer, for now, is to block the loss of photoacid or secondary electrons. In summary, underlayers in EUV lithography are primarily employed to mitigate stochastic printing failures, and to enhance the process window concerning pattern collapse, LWR, and photospeed. The development of advanced underlayers, such as etch-resistant, silicon-based thin underlayers, developable underlayers, and new underlayers for metal oxide resist or dry resist, is ongoing. Some of these innovative underlayers have already been successfully integrated into high-volume manufacturing, marking significant progress in the field. EUV lithography faces several challenges, particularly with photoresists. These challenges include pattern collapse, reduced EUV absorption, and decreased etch resistance as films are made thinner to achieve higher resolution. However, there are additional, newer challenges that EUV resists must overcome, as highlighted in the top table of our presentation. One significant challenge is the effect of out-of-band radiation or OOB problem. This issue arises because light sources emit not just EUV but also other longer wavelengths like vacuum UV, deep UV, visible, and infrared light. The reflective optics in EUV systems can inadvertently direct this non-EUV light from the light source to the resist film. Sometimes, organic chemical amplified resists demonstrate a stronger sensitivity to this non-EUV light compared to the EUV light itself, by a factor of up to 13 times. It has been estimated that 4% of the radiation from the EUV exposure tool is unwanted OOB radiation. These wavelengths will not have the resolution of the EUV wavelength and so will blur the aerial image. To counteract this, EUV resists can be coated with special top coats that filter out some of this unwanted radiation. For instance, JSR company has developed an EUV filter coating, known as EFC, for this purpose. Alternatively, EUV resists can be designed to be inherently less sensitive to OOB radiation, which is a more preferable solution. Additionally, new types of photoacid generator cations have been developed that are highly sensitive to EUV radiation while exhibiting minimal sensitivity to OOB light. Another problem in EUV resist is resist outgassing during exposure. The operation of EUV systems in vacuum environments involves a high sensitivity to outgassing of resist material. This outgassing can lead to contamination of the multi-layer mirrors in the projection optic box, POB. To protect these mirrors from contamination, one method employed is the use of a gas curtain. This involves flowing gas at low pressure across the wafer surface at the wafer stage, which helps carry away contaminants. This technique is referred to by ASML as the dynamic gas lock, DGL. On the other hand, inserting a solid membrane window between the wafer and the lens is another highly effective method to protect the optics. 
However, this comes at the cost of reducing the EUV light intensity, as the membrane has less than 90% transmission at EUV wavelengths. ASML names this the DGL membrane, positioned near the DGL area. In addition to protecting the optics from materials outgassed from the resist, these membranes can also act as spectral filters. They significantly reduce the amount of out-of-band deep UV and infrared light that reaches the wafer, thus mitigating one of the challenges mentioned earlier. EUV photoresist mirrors the functionality of photoresists used at longer imaging wavelengths but is tailored for the unique demands of EUV lithography. This adaptation is crucial to achieve remarkable photo speed at the significantly shorter EUV wavelength, necessitating a rapid change in solubility even under very low intensity light patterns. This requirement is underscored by the historical trend where the necessary dose of photoresist decreases as the light source's wavelength shortens. For instance, while broadband and eyeline resists require doses in the hundreds of millijoules per square centimeter, KRF and ARF resists need only 30 to 70, and EUV resists operate efficiently at an even lower range of 15 to 20. This positions EUV photoresists as the most responsive among semiconductor photoresists to date. The shift to 13.5 nanometers EUV lithography involves a dramatic reduction in the wavelength of the light source, approximately 14-fold from that used in 193 nanometers ARF lithography. When considering both the dose and wavelength changes, the number of photons required to print an image in the same area with EUV is reduced by 30 to 50 times compared to ARF. This significant reduction in photon count, coupled with the inherently low dose processes favored in EUV lithography, leads to substantial local pattern fidelity variations. These variations are primarily due to statistical fluctuations, a phenomenon known as photon shot noise. The effect of photon shot noise, which is inversely proportional to the square root of the photon count, is magnified in EUV lithography, being 5.5 to 7.1 times greater than in an ARF lithography. An illustrative comparison reveals that photons are absorbed more sparsely in EUV than in ARF, even at the same dose of 10 millijoule per square centimeter. This sparse absorption pattern leads to increased roughness in features such as line width roughness, line edge roughness, and contact edge roughness. It's important to note that shot noise exacerbates as imaging doses decrease and does not diminish with shrinking feature sizes. Consequently, as feature sizes continue to reduce, shot noise becomes a more significant factor relative to the size of the features. The root of photon shot noise lies in the fundamental physics of light, making noise and imaging a long-standing issue. It has been a contributing factor to line-edge roughness and contact hole non-uniformity in KRF and ARF resists. With EUV resists, the situation may be even more challenging due to the potential for added noise from the secondary electron process. Therefore, mitigating photon shot noise represents a paramount concern for the ongoing development and future applications of EUV photoresist technology to ensure the fidelity and uniformity of printed patterns. While there are differences in photon shot noise between EUV and deep UV lithography, the number of photoacids generated by exposure to both types of UV light remains comparable. This similarity holds true when the dose, photon energy, absorption coefficient, and quantum yield are collectively taken into account. The line edge roughness of patterns plays a crucial role in determining the electrical performance of the resulting electronic components such as line resistance and gate leakage currents. Yet, it's the stochastic effects that can lead to even more profound impacts on device functionality and manufacturing yield. Some images in left figure reveal the nature of these stochastic printing failures, which include phenomena such as microbridges or the occurrence of locally broken lines in line and space patterns. Additionally, dense hole patterns may exhibit missing or merging contacts or pillars, further complicating the lithographic outcome. As we venture into the realm of smaller CD and pitches, these stochastic effects become increasingly pronounced, leading to printing failures that significantly compromise yield. Despite their profound impact, the probability of such local, random printing errors is typically very low, leading to their characterization as black swan events. This term, inspired by the historical European assumption that all swans were white until black swans were discovered in Australia, symbolizes phenomena that are seemingly improbable or beyond the realm of conventional expectations. 
To quantify these stochastic effects, Peter de Bistop introduced a novel lithographic metric known as NOC, not OK. Schematic plots reveal the tendencies of the probabilities of stochastic printing failures, with an almost exponential dependence on CD. This relationship suggests the presence of a stochastic patterning cliff, a term coined by de Bischoff, indicating a sharp increase in failure probability at certain CD thresholds. The width of the CD distribution plays a crucial role, with broader distributions heightening the likelihood of stochastic printing errors and thus diminishing yield. When the CD distribution becomes overly broad, finding a process with an acceptable yield becomes increasingly challenging. Moreover, as mean CD gets smaller or larger by only a few nanometers, the defect density increases by several orders of magnitude. The stochastic failure-free CD window represents the range within which features are manufacturable, highlighting the critical CD dependency of stochastic printing failures at fixed pitches. If the feature fall outside this window, it becomes unmanufacturable, regardless of whether it lies within the Rayleigh resolution limit of the imaging system. This dependency of stochastic printing failures on CD at a fixed pitch presents a significant challenge in achieving finer resolutions in EUV lithography. In practical terms, stochastic effects encompass random, local variability among structures that should theoretically print identically. These effects include not only stochastic printing failures but also random CD variability such as line width roughness, LWR, line edge roughness, LER, for line and space patterning, contact edge roughness, CER, local critical dimension uniformity, LCDU, for contact or dot printing, and local edge placement errors. Addressing and mitigating these stochastic effects is paramount because this such defects limit lithographic capability. In this slide, our journey of understanding stochastic effects begins with an examination of the various steps involved in pattern formation, as depicted in the top left figure. Theoretical models derived from OPC verification calculations predict a certain process variability PV, band that suggests patterns should print reliably within a broad focus and dose range. However, real-world experimental data tell a different story. The stochastic variability, SV, band is so pronounced that it can lead to printing failures in some structures even at optimal focus and dose settings, as indicated by the missing contact highlighted with an arrow in the figure. This variability underscores the inherent discrete nature of photons and resist reactants, along with their interactions, which culminate in stochastic effects within the pattern features. Chris Mack has highlighted that stochastic effects are the defining boundaries of lithographic precision, especially as dimensions shrink to a few tens of nanometers and below. At this scale, traditional continuous models fall short in explaining the nuanced behaviors of light interaction and photoresist properties. The roots of stochastic defects trace back to the inherently discrete and random nature of the reactions and the material and homogeneity present throughout the resist pattern formation process. Photons, for instance, are emitted randomly, both in time and space, from the light source. Their interaction with the photoresist is equally unpredictable. A photon may collide with a pog molecule, leading to the creation of a photoacid, or it may bypass the photoresist entirely without inducing any reaction. Similarly, the impact of an EUV photon might result in the generation of a secondary electron, though this is not a certainty. These secondary electrons then partake in a series of random events, culminating in the release of a specific number of photoacids near the site of the original photon absorption. These stochastic processes are described by probabilistic metrics such as quantum efficiency and electron blur radius. Another contributor to stochastic effects is the random distribution of chemical species in the photoresist, termed as chemical noise. This randomness is inherent in the photoresist composition, which includes a diverse array of molecules, monomers, and polymers, each with distinct populations and sizes. The granularity introduced by these components affects the lithographically created features, with polymer resins, for instance, adding a level of granularity due to their molecular makeup. A molecule with a molecular weight of 10,000 atomic mass unit, for example, has an estimated diameter of about 3 nanometers. In a typical standard chemically amplified resist, the concentration of various components within a 10 nanometers cube can vary widely, with 40 to 200 pog molecules, 10 to 30 quencher molecules, and 1,000 to 2,000 protection groups. These numbers are not fixed but fluctuate, adding another layer of randomness to the process. 
The spacing between POC molecules, especially with high POC loading, averages around 1.7 nanometers, introducing further statistical variability. Moreover, these resist components are not uniformly distributed at the molecular level, leading to phenomena such as aggregation and segregation. Aggregation refers to the tendency of molecular constituents to cluster together, while segregation indicates variations in local component densities. POGs, due to their polar nature, are particularly prone to both aggregation and segregation, often observed at the resist film's top and bottom layers. These random behaviors extend into the post-exposure bake and development stages, where photoacids can move unpredictably, potentially deprotecting polymer protection groups or interacting with quencher molecules to form new chemical species. These variations create inconsistencies in how different areas of the resist film undergo solubility switching transformations, despite receiving seemingly uniform illumination. The visible outcomes of these inconsistencies range from edge roughness to the more severe issue of stochastic defects. Research efforts have sought to delineate the contributions of photon shot noise and resist materials to line edge roughness. It has been observed that while photon shot noise predominantly influences LER at lower doses, the composition of resist materials plays a more significant role at higher exposure doses, underscoring the complex interplay between various factors in determining lithographic outcomes. Significant progress has been made in adapting chemically amplified materials to suit the requirements of EUV lithography. Resist manufacturers have largely achieved, or are close to achieving, the resolution levels necessary for the first wave of EUV applications. However, there are notable challenges. The photo speed of these resists is slower than desired, and issues such as line width roughness, LWR, line edge roughness, LER, and contact hole CD uniformity are higher than preferred. A key aspect of this challenge is the trade-off between resist sensitivity and limiting resolution in typical EUV car resists. As depicted in the top left figure, the resists with the highest resolution tend to be the least sensitive, and slower resists generally yield better resolution results. Notably, none of the current resists meet the LWR standards set in the ITRS roadmap at any photo speed, posing a significant challenge for the semiconductor industry. Furthermore, there is a trade-off between LER and sensitivity across a wide range of typical EUV car resists. Consequently, EUV photoresists have struggled to simultaneously meet performance targets for resolution, LER, and sensitivity. In fact, the performance of EUV resist in these three areas has been identified as the primary barrier to the implementation of EUV technology. It is now well established that the three lithographic performance metrics like resolution, LER, and sensitivity are intrinsically linked in cars. Improving one metric often comes at the expense of the others. The critical component in these resists is the photo-generated acid. Adjusting factors like the addition of base quenchers or using POGs that generate bulky photo acids can reduce the diffusion length of photo acids. However, while shorter acid diffusion lengths can improve resolution, they can adversely affect LWR. Similarly, low concentrations of acid during imaging can yield rough lines but offer good sensitivity. Conversely, high concentrations of acid can produce smoother lines but result in poor sensitivity. This understanding has led to the recognition of trade-offs among resolution, lineage roughness, and resist exposure dose sensitivity. The right figure illustrates the trade-off relationship between these three lithographic performance parameters, forming what is known as the RLS triangle or triangle of death by some researchers. Various models have been proposed to describe the relationship between these critical performance parameters, with the z-constant proposed by Walla being particularly useful for comparing the performance of EUV resists. The interactions among resolution, LER, and sensitivity are expressed in a single metric, the z-factor, where smaller values are desirable. It's important to note that these three parameters cannot be adjusted arbitrarily. Lithographic technologies are targeted to specific nodes, fixing the resolution for a given node. Additionally, the integrated technology's requirements impose maximum usable values for LER, leaving dose sensitivity as the only parameter not fixed by the circuit-level technology. Exposure dose is a critical factor in terms of wafer cost, as higher doses lead to longer exposure times and reduce throughput. Consequently, purchasing additional EUV scanners to meet throughput demands is not a viable option due to their high cost. 
As resolution requirements increase for advanced nodes patterned with the UV lithography, the required sensitivity and LER also increase. Ideally, it is desirable to reduce all three quantities in the triangle, but reducing one often necessitates increases in the others. Many ideas have been attempted to improve the RLS trade-off. Typically increasing the film quantum yield for the production of more acids from absorbed photons allows for resists with simultaneously improved RLS. For example, high POG loading has been found to improve the RLS trade-off. Consequently, the POG loading in EUV car has been significantly increased, reaching up to 50%, a stark contrast to the less than 10% typically found in deep UV car. Similarly, using acid amplifier molecules helps to lower the needed dose for acid generation. Acid amplifiers are compounds that decompose in the presence of catalytic acids to create more acid. Therefore they can be used to amplify the amount of acid generated by POGs during exposure. The introduction of a photo-destroyable base quencher, PDQ, alongside an underlayer also plays a pivotal role in enhancing the concentration of photo acid in EUV car. The PDQ is designed to hinder the sideways movement of the photo acid, effectively confining it to the desired region. Meanwhile, the underlayer acts as a barrier, preventing the photo acid from diffusing downwards. Additionally, the use of a thicker photoresist layer is known to increase the generation of secondary electrons. By generating more secondary electrons, it is possible to alleviate the stochastic effects, which are the random fluctuations in the imaging process that can lead to defects or variations in the pattern features. However, a common concern when using thicker photoresist layers is the potential for pattern collapse during the development phase. This is typically due to an increased aspect ratio, where the height of the photoresist features becomes much greater compared to their width. A high aspect ratio can make the features structurally weak and prone to collapse. Photon noise and chemical noise are key contributors to stochastic effects in semiconductor lithography. These noises lead to the fluctuations in the number of relevant chemical species within small volumes, and consequent local edge roughness in photoresist patterns and stochastic printing errors. These effects are increasingly critical for feature sizes below 20 nanometers. Due to the high energy of photons and the low dose used in EUV lithography, it is more sensitive to stochastic effects compared to deep UV lithography. Stochastic defects are induced by these stochastic effects, which are based on the discreteness, randomness, and inhomogeneity of photons and photoresist materials. To mitigate these effects, strategies such as increasing the population of photons and acids or enhancing the homogeneity of resist materials are recommended. Boosting the exposure dose or enhancing the photoresist's absorption capacity can effectively reduce stochastic effects. The density of photoelectrons, which is crucial in this context, depends on both photon flux and absorption. Reducing statistical variations can be achieved by increasing the optical absorption of the resist materials. In the early stages of EUV lithography development, low optical absorption in EUV resist was preferred to avoid sloped sidewalls in developed resist features. However, as feature sizes have decreased, and the resist has been thinned to prevent pattern collapse, the absorption of EUV resist needed to increase to maintain the same fraction of incident light absorption. This need for increased absorptivity became more pressing as line edge roughness emerged as a primary concern with scaling. To maintain EUV photon numbers and material homogeneity, various methods have been applied. For instance, polymers like polyhydroxystyrene (PHS), used in KRF resist, have been popular due to their efficient secondary electron generation, as shown in the top right graph. It is postulated that polymers with low energy bands, such as PHS and ESCAPE, are better for electron trapping and acid generation compared to materials like MGH and PMMA with high energy bands. Polyacrylate polymers, used in ARF resist, are chosen for their good dissolution contrast. Consequently, escape polymer resins, combining both PHS and acrylate, are widely adopted for EUV car. Regarding photoacid generators, PAG, their concentration in EUV resists is increased up to 50%, compared to less than 10% in deep UV. This increase in POG molecules reduces enhances photo acid generation and material homogeneity, which reduces the discreteness and randomness of photo acid generation. As noted earlier, EUV absorption is dependent on the atomic composition of the resist material. 
typical organic car materials, containing elements like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, have relatively low absorbance at the thicknesses of interest, resulting in low sensitivity. Therefore, incorporating elements that strongly absorb UV light, such as fluorine or iodine, can be beneficial. As shown in the bottom right graph, replacing hydrogen with fluorine and iodine significantly increases EUV absorbance and photo acid generation per incident secondary electron. Replacing hydrogen with electron withdrawing groups is also helpful as it lowers the LUMO energy level of Pog molecule, making it easier to accept electrons and generate photo acids. However, increasing the optical absorption of EUV resist must be done carefully. If highly absorbing components are added but dispersed sparsely throughout the resist film, it could lead to centers of high optical absorption that are widely separated, increasing stochastic variation. Since pod molecules have a polar character with cation and anion, they are particularly prone to aggregation. Thus, ensuring even distribution of pods throughout the resist film is crucial, which requires consideration at the molecular scale. To address this, pogs are often bonded to resist polymers, which can suppress aggregation and reduce acid diffusion for better LER performance. This is video number 26, and just like a chip needs a circuit, we need your support and cheer. Hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up like you would a successful chip yield, and ring that notification bell so you won't miss out on our electrifying content. Don't forget to show your extra appreciation with a super thanks, it's like fuel for our creative journey. Now, ready to jump again? Arf arf arf. Bow wow. Yip. Light speed. In this section, let's delve into an in-depth discussion about metal oxide resists, which are in the spotlight as a promising solution to some of the limitations faced by traditional chemically amplified organic photoresists, especially in EUV applications. Due to the high energy characteristics of EUV radiation, a wide variety of resist chemistries are theoretically viable. However, the relatively low power of EUV light sources has necessitated the development of resist chemistries with rapid sensitivity, notably chemically amplified resists, CARs. Consequently, CARs have become the foundation of first-generation photoresist technology, playing a pivotal role since the introduction of EUV lithography into high-volume manufacturing. However, they encounter specific challenges when utilized for EUV lithography especially at smaller technology nodes with patterns smaller than 20 nanometers. At this tiny scale, the film thickness of the EUV photoresist must also be reduced, approximately 35 nanometers. This reduction is crucial to prevent pattern collapse, which is a risk due to the high aspect ratio of the patterns. Features with aspect ratios larger than 2 tend to collapse after development, when the rinse liquid is dried off. The resist thickness is also limited by the smaller depth of focus margin. Throughout the history of KRF and ARF lithography, there has been an ongoing challenge to develop resist materials that are sufficiently transparent. This transparency is crucial for achieving straight sidewalls in printed features. Conversely, for EUV lithography, there is a recommendation to formulate resists that are more absorbent to enhance both absorption of EUV radiation and acid generation efficiency per photon, especially when targeting low doses and high resolution. However, a problem arises with organic cars in that they are too transparent for EUV radiation, which is evident from the optical absorption coefficients displayed in the table. Additionally, employing thinner resist films introduces another challenge, insufficient absorption of EUV light. For instance, a car film that is 35 nanometers thick can absorb only about 15% of the EUV energy it is exposed to. This low level of absorption necessitates a higher dose for effective patterning, leading to decreased throughput and potential productivity issues. It has been calculated that the optimal photo speed for a resist film is achieved when it absorbs 43% of the incident light. A reasonable target for EUV lithography is for the resist film to absorb around 25% of the incident EUV light to balance efficient exposure with the practicalities of resist design and processing. Additionally, organic photoresists struggle to withstand the etching process at such reduced thicknesses. This is critical as etching is used to transfer the pattern onto the substrate. Another factor where organic cars did not perform well was the balance between resolution, line width roughness, and sensitivity known as the RLS trade-off, which is a key performance metric in EUV lithography. To address these challenges, the industry has turned its attention to inorganic photoresist materials. 
These materials, with their high EUV absorption and superior etch resistance, stand out as strong contenders to tackle the issues present with organic resists. Since around 2009, metal-containing resists, or MCRs, have been receiving significant attention. The key advantage of MCRs is their ability to capture more EUV photons if the metal is chosen correctly. This capability improves the resist sensitivity, which makes a more productive use of the secondary electrons compared to traditional organic resists. One of the substantial benefits of using MCRs is the potential to eliminate the need for a hard mask layer, which is a significant cost saver. This is because MCRs inherently possess high etch resistance due to the metal content in the film. Consequently, it's possible to apply a thinner film, even as low as 20 nanometers, without compromising on durability. This not only saves on material costs but also reduces the risk of pattern collapse due to improved structural integrity. To illustrate the efficacy of MCRs, consider the right CD SEM image showing dense pillar patterns with a 42 nanometer pitch for both organic and inorganic resists. The organic chemically amplified resist with an aspect ratio of about 1.8 shows signs of pattern collapse. In contrast, the inorganic resist, despite having an aspect ratio of about 1, displays no pattern collapse within the observed area. The aspect ratio here refers to the height of the resist divided by the width of the pillar pattern. An exemplary instance of metal-containing resists, MCR, is the metal oxide resist formulated by Inprea Corporation, a subsidiary of JSR company since 2021. Inprea's metal oxide resist, MOR, has proven to be a formidable contender against traditional organic chemically amplified resists, CAR, within the realm of EUV lithography. It boasts a superior patterning resolution, enhanced margins against line collapse, and greater etch resistance compared to traditional CAR. Despite these advantages, its adoption in high-volume manufacturing was initially hindered due to its requirement for a higher EUV dose due to the absence of chemical amplification mechanism. This requirement for a higher dose in EUV lithography, which leads to reduced wafer throughput, necessitates an increase in the number of expensive EUV scanner units to maintain the desired production output. Despite these challenges, continuous development and refinement have led to a turning point where silicon wafer fabrication plants are beginning to integrate in Prius MOR. The driving force behind this shift is the technology's superior line edge roughness, which is a crucial quality parameter, especially in the manufacturing of small technology nodes. Inprea's MOR utilizes tin oxo cluster molecules, also known as tin oxo cages, as the fundamental building block. These clusters are composed of spherical tin oxo cages, within which each tin atom is covalently bonded to an organic group. The clusters carry a positive charge of plus 2 and are typically combined with pairs of anions referred to as X. One of the traditional limitations of organic resists has been their lower absorbance of EUV light. This is due to their composition which includes elements such as hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, all of which have relatively low EUV absorption rates. In contrast, Inprea's MOR has a higher capacity for EUV light absorption because the optical densities of tin and oxygen are substantially greater than that of carbon, by 10.5 times and 1.7 times respectively. This quality renders the Inprea MOR relatively dark and highly effective in EUV photon absorption. The process of formulating Inprea's metal oxide resist, MOR, begins with dissolving a tin precursor in MIBC solvents. This solution is then spin-coated to create a thin film. The tin precursor typically consists of a tin core atom bonded to either one alkyl group, three alkoxy groups, or ester groups. When exposed to EUV light at specific wavelengths, the tin carbon bonds and the precursor are dissociated. This reaction leads to the formation of spherical tin oxo clusters, which is the fundamental building blocks of the Inprea MOR structure. Following this initial reaction, the precursors undergo a condensation reaction during post-exposure bake. The reaction involves the further elimination of water and ligand molecules. This re reaction involves the elimination of both water and the original ligand. In the areas where the film is exposed to EUV light, it transforms into a tin oxo network. This network exhibits very little solubility. In contrast, the unexposed parts retain their solubility and can be washed away using an organic solvent like 2-heptanone. As a result of these properties, Inprea MOR is classified as a negative type photoresist, characterized by its negative tone development. This classification is due to the fact that the areas of the film that are exposed to light become insoluble, while the unexposed areas are removed during the development process. Further into its mechanism, it has been found that energies above 2 electron volt are sufficient to break the tin carbon bonds. 
This bond breaking leads to a cross-link reaction, resulting in a denser final film. When exposed to light irradiation, the metal oxide core of the resist loses some of its ligands. This loss triggers the aggregation of the remaining components, forming insoluble oxide aggregates characterized by tin oxygen, tin chemical bonds. In this slide, we'll delve into the pros and cons of INPRIA's MOR. A typical organic resist polymer, with a molecular weight around 10,000 atomic mass units, has a molecular diameter of about 5 nanometers. This measurement, known as the radius of gyration, is roughly one quarter of CD target and lithography processes. Moreover, such organic resists usually require additional additives like POG and quenchers, leading to chemical inhomogeneity and increased chemical noise. In contrast, INPRIA's metal oxide resist is a unique, single component photoresist that doesn't rely on these additives. Its fundamental building unit is the metal oxo cluster with about 1 nanometer size, offering smaller molecular granularity and homogeneity. The utilization of small clusters with finer molecular granularity and homogeneity in INPRIA MOR significantly contributes to reduce line edge roughness in the developed patterns. INPRIA MOR also demonstrates a significantly higher EUV absorption rate, about four times greater than that of conventional organic car. This enhanced absorption capability allows for the use of much thinner films, under 20 nanometers, thereby reducing the risk of pattern collapse compared to thicker films used in standard car processes. Additionally, INPRIA MOR exhibits a high etch resistance due to its composition, which includes tin atoms. Its etch rate is approximately 57 times slower than that of organic resists when using oxygen-based etching chemistry. This property makes MOR particularly useful as a hard mask, even at lower thicknesses. It also simplifies the bilayer system in lithography, allowing for direct exposure of the metal oxide resist on a sacrificial carbon layer and eliminating the need for an intermediate spin on glass hard mask which is typically necessary in car processes. Furthermore, INPRIA MOR operates as a negative resist based on a condensation reaction and is classified as non-car. This is because it does not involve chemical amplification through photoacid diffusion during the post-exposure bake. As a result, INPRIA MOR exhibits an image blur of about 2 nanometers, attributable solely to secondary electron blur. In comparison, organic resists show an image blur of around 5 nanometers, as they are affected by both electron blur and acid blur. In terms of development, INPRIA MOR employs negative tone development with an organic solvent, enabling swell-free development and better pattern collapse margins. This is due to the lower surface tension of organic developers compared to aqueous TMAH developers. On the other hand, organic resists with a positive tone development typically need a low surfactant rinse process to reduce surface tension and prevent pattern collapse. A significant concern with metal-containing resists like INPRIA MOR is the risk of cross-metal contamination and outgassing of metal species when exposed to EUV tools. For example, tin atoms have a donor level similar to potassium atoms, meaning higher tin contamination could potentially impact transistor performance. Additionally, storage conditions for the tin precursor are critical. While it passes shelf life tests at room temperature, it fails at higher temperatures at 40 degrees Celsius over 6 months, indicating the need for careful storage to prevent environmental degradation. Lastly, it's important to note that MOR effectiveness in EUV lithography is chemistry dependent. The benefits of a metal system in lithography are only realized when the chemistry is appropriately configured. In summary, while INPRIA MOR presents several advantages over traditional organic resists, including higher EUV absorption, lower line edge roughness, and higher etch resistance, it also faces challenges such as potential contamination risks and specific storage requirements. Its efficacy in EUV lithography heavily relies on the precise chemical composition of the resist. The lithographic resist specifications outlined in the 2021 International Roadmap for Devices and Systems, IRDS, for the 5 nanometer. 3 nanometer and sub 3 nanometer technology nodes present a series of challenges and obstacles critical to the successful fabrication of devices at these advanced nodes. These challenges are deeply connected to the characteristics of chemically amplified resists, CAR, the effects of thin film confinement, and the properties of polymer molecules. These factors, whether acting individually or together, serve as limitations to resolution potentially leading to significant issues in device manufacturing. These issues include inadequate CD control, increased LER, pattern collapse, and the difficulty in achieving the desired RLS target. 
At the heart of these challenges is the molecular scale at which these processes operate. With a typical carbon-carbon bond length ranging from 0.13 to 0.15 nanometers, both resolution and LE are approaching near atomic scales. This proximity to atomic scale dimensions underscores the precision required in resist development and the inherent difficulties in maintaining control over patterning processes as dimensions shrink. The implications of these resolution limit issues are profound, affecting the ability to manufacture devices that meet the stringent demands of next-generation technology nodes. Overcoming these hurdles requires a comprehensive understanding of the underlying mechanisms of CAR imaging, as well as an exploration of new materials and techniques that can mitigate thin film confinement effects and optimize polymer molecular properties. The pursuit of solutions to these resolution limit issues is critical for the advancement of semiconductor technology, pushing the boundaries of what is achievable in device miniaturization and performance. Chemically amplified resists, CARs, offer significant advantages in lithography, particularly due to their sensitivity to light, which is crucial for patterning fine features. However, CARs encounter a critical limitation that impacts their performance at the most advanced technology nodes, especially as we venture into sub-20 nanometers dimensions. This limitation centers around the diffusion of the catalyst, typically a photoacid, generated in the exposed regions of the resist. This photoacid can migrate into unexposed areas, causing a blurring of the latent image, which directly affects the resolution and line edge roughness, LER, of the pattern features. The diffusion of photoacid is a thermally driven process, making the diffusion length and rate in cars sensitive to temperature changes. Consequently, the car concept's adaptability to sub-20 nanometers technology nodes hinges on employing low activation energy for the deprotection reaction. Resists with low activation energy, such as those using acetal or kettle protecting groups, typically require lower post-exposure bake, PEB, temperatures. This results in reduced acid blur and, subsequently, better LER. As we progress to advanced nodes patterned with EUV lithography, the demands for increased resolution, improved LER, and heightened sensitivity become more pronounced. However, enhancing these parameters simultaneously presents a significant challenge due to the intrinsic RLS trade-off relationship among these three critical lithographic performance metrics. Given that the resolution target is predetermined by the half pitch required for the technology node, it becomes crucial to manage the trade off between LER and sensitivity, excluding resolution. Improving sensitivity or photo speed faces practical limits, notably the economic and logistical impracticality of simply acquiring more EUV scanners to meet production volume targets. Consequently, there is a growing emphasis on LER improvements. In the case of cars, efforts predominantly focus on reducing photon shot noise and chemical noise. Non-car resist types, which do not involve a chemical amplification mechanism, are explored to circumvent the acid diffusion issue, highlighting a different approach to tackling these challenges. Furthermore, LER post-process treatments offer a means to enhance LER or resolution through auxiliary process technologies rather than modifications to the photoresist itself. In this discussion, we explore the foundational concepts behind new approaches aimed at next-generation technology, such as high NAEUV lithography. Several innovative technologies are currently under development, promising significant advancements in EUV resist technology and post-processing techniques in the near future. Given the constraints of time, we will focus on three particularly promising topics, multi-triggering resist, MTR, photosensitization chemically amplified resist, PS car, and vapor deposited dry developed metal resist. These approaches represent the forefront of research and development efforts to push the boundaries of what's possible in EUV lithography, addressing the critical resolution limit issues of resist and offering pathways to meet the stringent demands of next generation device fabrication. The concept of multi trigger resist, MTR, was developed by British Irresistible Materials Limited to tackle RLS trade-off that is inherent in chemically amplified resists used for advanced node patterning. This innovative system is an organic molecular negative type resist that operates based on a cross-linking mechanism. In the MTR system, two primary components are involved in radiation-induced chemical reactions, the multi-trigger molecule, MTM, and the cross-linker, XT, with a photoacid generator, PAG, included to initiate the reaction. 
The MTM acts as a matrix molecule with a cross-linkable functional group. Initially inactive due to a protecting group, it becomes capable of cross-linking with a nearby activated XT once deprotected by photoacid. This process which mirrors the acid-catalyzed chemical amplification seen in traditional car systems, involves acid regeneration. The XT component is an epoxy crosslinker molecule. Activation occurs when XT undergoes a ring opening reaction triggered by photoacids, allowing it to crosslink with other activated XTs or activated MTMs in proximity. By adjusting the ratio of MTM to XT, the effects of the MTR can be finely tuned. Enhancements in line width edge roughness within the MTR system are elucidated by contrasting the chemical reactions occurring at the center of a line feature where photoacid concentration is high, against those at the line's edges, where photoacid concentration is lower. In areas receiving a high dose, such as the center of a feature pattern, multiple cross-linking reactions are initiated. Due to the high concentration of photoacid from the POG molecule, both MTM and XT can be activated simultaneously. Given their proximity in these high-dose regions, MTM and XT can readily cross-link. The catalytic regeneration of acids by MTM further enhances the ring opening and cross-linking reactions, resulting in a product that is insoluble in the developer due to its high molecular weight. Conversely, at the edges of a feature pattern where the dose is lower, activated MTM and XT are too far apart to interact. The low density of photoacids in these regions means the amplification process is significantly diminished or halted, effectively reducing acid blurring effects caused by uncontrolled diffusion outside the patterned areas. This leads to an increased chemical gradient at the pattern's edge, enabling enhanced resolution and LER while preserving the sensitivity benefits of chemical amplification. In such scenarios, even if XTs polymerize among themselves, they revert to the starting oligomers in the absence of interaction with activated MTM. At its core, the MTR mechanism self-limiting reaction provides high sensitivity at certain dose thresholds but rapidly diminishes the resist response as the dose decreases. The MTR material's intrinsic self-quenching mechanism limits acid diffusion migration, facilitating the achievement of ultimate resolutions with reduced edge roughness and sharper pattern feature edges. The photosensitized chemically amplified resist PS CAR introduces a novel approach aimed at enhancing the sensitivity of chemically amplified photoresists. This method holds promise for making significant progress in addressing RLS trade-off in a sophisticated and refined manner. Research contributions have come from various parts of the globe, with substantial input from the Tagawa Group at Osaka University. In traditional positive type chemically amplified resists, CAR, the core components include a polymer resin, a photoacid generator, PAG, and a photodestroyable base quencher, PDQ. The PS car system innovates by adding a new element, a photosensitive precursor, PP, into the resist formulation. This addition aims to increase the number of photoacids in exposed areas, leading to sharper images than would be possible by merely increasing the POG concentration in the resist. A comparison between the processes for typical CAR and PS CAR is illustrated in the provided figure for a clearer understanding. A key distinction between the standard CAR process and the PS CAR process is the incorporation of an extra flood exposure step in PS CAR to boost sensitivity. During the EUV exposure followed by a post-exposure bake PEV, step, the PPs are transformed into photosensitizers PS, through the action of acids generated by the POG. Initially, the PP is protected by a kettle group, which then transforms into PS in the presence of catalytic acid and water. Notably, while PP is not responsive to 365 nanometer eyeline light, PS can absorb this wavelength, evidenced by a shift in its absorption bands from 300 to 360 nanometers. The additional flood exposure step employs 365 nanometer eyeline light, where the PS reacts with remaining pogs to produce more photoacids. This step is followed by another PEB step to facilitate resist polarity change reactions such as deprotection, catalyzed by the newly generated photoacids. This reaction is confined to the EUV exposed area, as pogs in unexposed regions do not undergo photochemical reactions at this wavelength. 
Thus this process preferentially amplifies photoacids in highly exposed regions, resulting in steeper acid chemical gradients and higher chemical contrast which is beneficial for reducing defects induced by stochastics. Notably, this method utilizes cost-effective I-line photons instead of pricier EUV photons for generating extra photoacids. Flood exposure modules that provide uniform I-line light can be integrated into track equipment without a photomask. This is because the PP molecule in unexposed areas cannot absorb this light, while the PS molecule in exposed areas selectively does. Consequently, the entire process can be executed seamlessly using resist processing equipment such as that from Tokyo Electron Limited. The PS car concept is ingeniously designed to enhance contrast by allowing an increase in base quencher loading while simultaneously fine-tuning the flood exposure dose. Despite various optimization efforts, the PS car platform's performance has so far paralleled that of conventional car with high pog loading. Ongoing development will determine if the gains in chemical contrast can compensate for potential increases in stochastic effects due to the added resist components. Recently, there has been a significant development in the field of EUV lithography with the advent of dry resist technology. This innovative approach has seen collaboration among industry leaders such as LAM Research, Integris, and Gelist, aiming to advance the EUV dry resist technology ecosystem. This innovative method involves conducting both the deposition and development of the resist under vacuum conditions, hence the term dry resist technology. The foundation of this technology is based on metal oxide resist, MOR, similar to the Impria resist we've discussed, which employs spin coating and organic solvent development. The dry resist technology benefits from all the advantages of Impria MOR including small building block size, high EUV absorbance, excellent etch selectivity, and the homogeneity of a single component resist. Historically, dry resist processes particularly those based on organosilicon, were explored for deep UV exposure. This involved depositing an organosilicon resist film using a low-power RF plasma CVD method with an organosilicon precursor. Upon exposure to deep UV light in air, the organosilicon polymer in the exposed area transforms into an organosilicon oxide polymer. This transformation allowed for dry development using halogen chemistries like HBr, which provided good selectivity between the silicon-like polymer in unexposed areas and the silicon oxide-like polymer in exposed areas. However, the conformal coating capabilities of the CVD process were limited when applied over significant topography. The resurgence of interest in dry resist technology is partly due to the resolution and LER limitations faced by EUV car system. Dry development, which is achievable using halogen chemistries, offers selectivity between the cross-linked exposed area and the non-cross-linked unexposed area. Unlike the Infria MOR system that uses an organic solvent to remove the unexposed area, dry development eliminates the use of solvents by etching out the exposed area selectively. This absence of capillary forces which can cause pattern collapse in liquid phase processes, is not a concern in vapor phase processes, allowing for increased feature heights to enhance EUV absorbance. However, this benefit comes with a trade-off concerning the vertical resist profile. Moving on to the vacuum deposition of the tin resist film, this process typically utilizes tin precursors with alkyl and amide ligands. The amide ligand aids in depositing a tin resist film with tin hydroxide groups ready for condensation, while the alkyl ligand facilitates the breaking of tin carbon bonds upon EUV exposure. The thickness of the resist is readily adjustable, thanks to precise CVD process control. Given the successful employment of Impria MOR based on spin coating and wet development for high volume manufacturing, dry resist technology is targeted for next generation applications such as high ENA scanners. Although initial evaluations are promising, full integration with ASML scanners for a seamless process flow is still in development. Additionally, extensive efforts are being made to address challenges like tin contamination control in the backside or bevel area and the vacuum deposition of underlayers. Farewell, Silicon Pioneers. Our journey today, navigating the intricate yet utterly captivating realm of EUV lithography technology, has been both exhaustive and enlightening. It was my aim to shed light on topics vital for those looking to excel as lithography engineers or work in close quarters with experts in the field. 
I am deeply thankful and honored to have led us through this knowledge-packed expedition, from our very first episode to this concluding chapter on EUV lithography. While we've endeavored to stay abreast of the latest technology and developments up to the end of 2023, it's important to remember that this field evolves rapidly. There are countless dedicated innovators in this arena, working tirelessly to develop both cost-effective and high-performance chips, ensuring a luminous future ahead. It is my hope that this five-part series on EUV lithography, especially its significance in the semiconductor industry's high-volume manufacturing, has illuminated the path for our community of silicon pioneers. While high end lithography may beckon, it's still in its nascent stages, making it premature to delve into at this time. For the technology enthusiasts among you, our discussions have been a goldmine of knowledge. Deeply understanding these technologies is essential for driving innovation forward, as demonstrated by the leaps made in EUV lithography. Sharing this wealth of knowledge is crucial, laying the groundwork for the next generation of tech enthusiasts poised to spearhead future breakthroughs. Should you have a topic you're eager to explore, feel free to suggest it in the comments. I'm open to considering it for our upcoming content. If today's episode has piqued your interest, I encourage you to delve into the rest of our series. Your active engagement, be it through likes, subscriptions, notifications, or even super thanks, immensely supports our channel and fuels our passion for disseminating knowledge. Your zeal and curiosity are the lifeblood of semi-slides. We have an array of fascinating subjects yet to explore, and I eagerly anticipate continuing this educational voyage with you. Until our paths cross again, keep innovating and stay semiconductive.